let's continue our uh, kind of a discussion on groove grooving. We're going to take uh, we're going to take this little track again, and I'm going to show you how not to groove. All right, let's go for it. <laughs> That was awesome if you want to get fired from your first funk band. Uh, obviously, no one's going to put up with that. And the biggest problem is, is that, you know, when we go through, you know, you go and buy a book about funk patterns and, and groove patterns, they get pretty technical. And unless you're playing, you know, unless you're filling in for Dave Weckl, you're probably not going to have a lot of opportunity to throw that stuff in on a, on a nightly basis. Um, or you're just going to piss everyone off in your band. So let's take that same track again and let's groove it. Now, the idea of grooving, of course, is to everyone should, you know, be digging into their parts rather than everyone just completely showboating all over the place. If you take a really busy drummer and you add in a busy bass player and a busy piano player and a busy guitar player, well, you just got, well, you've got avant-garde jazz or you've got, you know, or you've got a big mess on your hands. So everyone has to just kind of back off. So let's take that same track and let's groove it. Now, we're not going to just play the same thing over and over again, but we're going to be subtle. We're going to change, have some, you know, interplay between our snare and our bass drum and our and our hi hat, rather than just, you know, soloing, Buddy Rich style through everything. <laughs> So even in that example, it got a little, uh, maybe even a little carried away than, uh, you know, than I would normally play in a gig, just to, just to give you an example. But when, you know, for those of you who are playing uh, with, with groups, when you're out playing, try to, try to lock into that groove. Try to hold back on hitting that cymbal or doing that drum fill and, and see how it actually overall enhances the song. Uh, and you'll be surprised, and, and people, you know, your bandmates, etc., will probably, you know, comment and go, hey, you know, things are sounding really tight. Things are sounding really tight, and you'll get that, you know, because as soon as someone strays off from the norm, um, you run the risk of, of a little bit of, of, of looseness and, a, you know, losing that tight groove. So, you know, that'd be something you should try to work towards. And, uh, you know, if you do find that you are, a, you know, a busier drummer, then, you know, kind of recognize that and, and look to hold off. And, you know, you don't have to play all your fanciest licks all at one time or all in one song. And there will be time enough for that later on, perhaps in a, in a you know, if you have a, show, uh, a showcase kind of song where you can kind of let loose a little bit, um, you know, and that might be a good thing to, you know, ask your bandmates and say, you know what, I promise I won't overplay but I need I need to uh, l you know let some steam loose later on if you can let me you know go for it a little bit in a drum solo or something, and that'll keep the rest of your uh, the rest of your performances throughout the night uh, th or throughout your set you know sounding very tight. You know try focus when you're playing on playing this you know as as much as you can playing the same. Look at my hand it's just going for it. <laughs> you want to stop it. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so, see, it wants to do it. All right, anyway. 